Hello. This video is about introduction to the basic concepts of cost. I am Monica Parikh, a cost accountant, visiting faculty AISS MS, College of Hotel Management and Catering Technology. The topics that we are going to cover today are concepts of cost, costing, cost accounting, and cost accountancy. We are going to study the origin of cost accounting, the objectives and its features, advantages and limitations of cost accounting, and the difference between the financial accounting and cost accounting, and conceptual analysis of cost unit and cost center. So let us with introduction to cost accounting. How has cost accounting evolved? Initially, as you are aware, each organization has to maintain the financial transactions that it enters into or what is known as financial accounting. So financial accounting is primarily concerned with record keeping directed towards preparation of profit and loss and balance sheet. It provides information regarding to the profit or loss of the business and is making also its financial position as on that date. But there are several limitations of financial accounting. For example, no clear idea of the operating efficiency. Financial accounting does not give a clear picture of the operating efficiency when prices are rising or decreasing on account of inflation or trade depression. The weakness is not spotted out in a collective result. The financial accounting discloses the profit or loss collectively for the whole business. If there is any weak link in the business or any particular area which is not earning you profits, this will not be highlighted or easily identifiable under financial accounting. Financial accounting is also not helpful in price fixation. There is no classification of expense and accounts. In financial accounting, there is no such system by which accounts are classified so as to give data regarding cost per department. Therefore, because of these limitations, cost accounting was introduced. Cost accounting is a branch of accounting and has been developed due to these limitations of financial accounting. Let us have a look at the meaning of costing and cost accounting. Costing is a technique and a process of ascertaining the cost. This technique consists of principles and rules which govern the procedure of ascertaining the cost of products and services. The process of costing includes Routines such as ascertaining the cost by historical or conventional way, standard costing or marginal costing. Cost accounting is the classifying and recording and appropriate allocation of expenditure for the determination of cost of a product or a service and also presenting it in a suitable manner for the purpose of decision making and control of management. I'll explain this again. Basically, cost accounting is recording only the costs which the entity incurs for manufacturing or providing service or a product. And this recording is presented in a suitable manner which will help the management to make decisions and also 
control the activity. Now, what is cost accountancy? Cost accountancy is the scientific application of costing and cost accounting principles, methods and techniques. It is the art of presentation of information. The principles and conventions are formed under cost, costing. And cost accountancy is an art of presentation, this, applying those principles and presenting the information. Now, this presentation is going to help the management in performing their functions of planning, controlling, and decision making. So, like we had seen earlier in cost accounting, where the conventions and the principles are formed, the application and use of those comes under the purview of cost accountancy. The features of cost accounting. It is a process of accounting for costs. It records income and expenditure relating to the production of goods and services. It provides data on which estimates can be prepared and quotations can be submitted. It is con concerned with cost ascertainment, that is finding out the costs so that you are able to control the cost or even reduce the cost. Cost accounting establishes budgets and standards so that the actual performance can be compared with the budget or the standard and if there are any deviations or variations, those can be identified. It helps the management in planning, decision making and control. So these are the features of cost accounting. To summarize it, we are recording the costs for a particular product or services in a systematic way and presenting it to the management or the concerned person so that it will help them to plan their activities, to take decisions and also to control those activities. This is done through budgets and standard costing. The objectives of cost accounting. Again, it is basically the ascertainment and analysis of cost and income by product or service. So each cost or product, sorry, each product or a service that is provided by an organization, the cost for the same is ascertained and a detailed analysis of the cost is done. How is it done? It is done by collecting and using the cost data. So, collecting and using the cost data for the control purpose to have minimum cost along with quality. And making this cost data available to the management for decision making. So, as you can see, again, the objective of cost accounting is nothing but to ascertain the costs of the product or the services so that the management can control the activities, control the costs without compromising on the quality and helps this management to achieve its objectives. The advantages of cost accounting. It is very, very important to understand the advantages. The profitable and not profitable activities are identified. When you are collecting the data or calculating the costs and the income related to a certain product, you can easily pinpoint the profitable products and the non-profitable products. 
So if there is any non-profitable activity that is being carried on in the organization, which is not adding value to the organization, corrective measures can be taken. Therefore, the first advantage is profitable and non-profitable activities are identified. Secondly, it enables the organization to measure the efficiency and then to maintain it or improve it. This is done with the help of the valuable data made available for the purpose of comparison. For example, if a material was spent and in 2016 at a cost of 1000 rupees and the similar material is now being spent at 1500 rupees, the increase may be due to increase in the prices of material or it could be because of the wastage in the use of the material and so inefficiency can be identified and corrective actions can be taken. So if it is easy to identify whether the prices have also increased or whether the efficiency has decreased etc. So the second advantage is that it enables the entity to measure the efficiency and then to maintain the efficiency and or improve it. It provides information on which estimates and tenders are based. In case of big contracts or jobs, quotation cannot be given unless the cost of completing the contracts can be found out and this is done through cost accounting. It guides the future production policies. It explains the cost incurred and the profit made in various lines of business and processes and thereby provides data on the basis of which production can be appropriately planned. It also helps to increase the profits by disclosing the sources or waste, sorry, by disclosing the sources of loss or waste and by suggesting such controls so that wastages, leakages and inefficiencies of all departments may be detected and prevented. These were the main advantages of cost accountancy. Every coin has two sides. Just like there were advantages, there are certain limitations of cost accounting. The first is lack of uniform procedure. There are large number of conventions, estimates and flexible factors like classification of costs into various elements, but there are no fixed procedures or uniform procedures while applying the cost accounting. It is possible that two equally competent cost accountants may arrive at a different result from the same information. So this is one of the limitations of cost accounting. The second is that it is an expensive exercise. It is said that the cost involved in installing and working a cost system is out of all proportion to the benefits derived therefore. It may be stated in this connection that a costing system must be profitable investment and should produce benefits which are more compared to the expenditure incurred in installing the cost accounting system. Especially for small organizations, the benefits derived could be much less as compared to the cost incurred in establishing or implementing the cost accounting system. Therefore, this happens to be the second limitation of cost accounting. But say, saying this, costing is an aid to management. We all know that 
the three main functions of management are planning, decision making and controlling. So let's have a look at how costing can be an aid to management in planning. Planning is basically thinking in advance, that is looking ahead and deciding in advance what to do now, how to do, when to do. In planning, management is concerned with laying down objectives and determining the course of actions to be followed by and using several alternatives which are evaluated. Thus, planning is concerned with future activity and formulates budgets to meet the objectives of the organization. Costing helps this formulation of budgets when you are anticipating or estimating the costs that are likely to be incurred. The second important function of management is decision making. Since the management has to make a choice of one course of action out of several alternative courses of action available, it involves decision making like fixation of price, whether or not price should be reduced or increased for sales revenue, whether the change in production should be followed, whether or not factory should operate at full capacity. These are just a few decisions that a management has to make, which the costing comes to the aid of management to take these decisions. Finally, control. Controlling is that part of management activity whereby managers compare the actual performance against the planned performance, find out the deviations and take corrective steps to remove those deviations or variations. So costing will help you to measure the actual cost compare it with the budget which you had done in planning and if there is any difference that is known as deviation or variation it helps the management to take measures let's have a look at the difference between financial accounting and cost accounting the pur very purpose of financial accounting is to provide information in general way related to the profit or loss of an entity or to find out the financial position of the entity. Cost accounting is basically providing information to the management related only to the costs incurred and the efficient use of resources. The format of the reports generated under financial accounting is fixed. For example, it is governed by the Companies Act or the Income Tax Act when you are preparing the profit and loss account or the balance sheet. The format of reports generated under cost accounting are not fixed and depends on the type of information required by the management. For example, the management would ask for department-wise cost. The management could ask product or service-wise costs so the format is not fixed under cost accounting. Financial accounting period is fixed to annual period. That is every year or annually it is necessary that each organization prepares its profit and loss account and balance sheet. The reporting under cost accounting could be monthly, weekly, fortnightly or half yearly or any number of days, weeks or months again depending upon the information required by the management. The profit and loss and the balance sheet of companies are easily available and are shared with the shareholders of the company whereas the reports generated under cost accounting are highly confidential and are available only to the decision makers that is the management. The shareholders do not get to see these reports. The time period for financial accounting or the transactions which are recorded are mostly historical. That is after the transaction takes place you are recording it. So the data under financial accounting is historical. Whereas under cost accounting, it is historical data 
It is the present as well as the future. Whenever you are creating the budgets, it is futuristic. Whenever you are estimating, it is futuristic. These were the main differences between financial accounting and cost accounting. Now let's have a look or define what is a cost unit and a cost center. Cost unit is a unit of product or service in relation to which costs are ascertained. Example, the way in which you are measuring the cost is a cost unit. For example, in a company manufacturing paint, you will be calculating or ascertaining the cost per liter of paint. So the liter becomes a unit of product. A room in a hotel becomes a cost unit when you are able to ascertain the cost or find the cost per room. It could include the electricity consumed per room plus the maintenance, the housekeeping charges per room. As I explained earlier, a liter of paint and in hospitals, it could be the cost in patient. Now cost center is a production or service location, function, activity or item of equipment we can also say it could be a department as a whole for which costs are asserted. It could be a department, a machine, a project. For example, in case of an hotel, the reception could be one cost center. Housekeeping could be one center. The restaurant could be a center. Okay, so in a hotel, if the restaurant is a cost center where the costs are ascertained for the restaurant as a whole, it becomes a cost center. But when you ascertain a cost per dish, the dish could become a cost unit. I hope this video has been helpful to you and understand the basics of cost accounting. Thank you so much.